some abstract hmm. paintings. It's a triangle, but going in circles. Yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of abstract mathematical hmm. things. And we've got a light here. Just a lamp. Uh, anything in this drawer? Box of matches. All right, well, we'll take those. There's only one left. Well, I guess we'll have to make it make it count. And see what's in the house proper. Hopefully he's not home. Or it's going to be a little bit awkward. Uh, wine opener. All right, we'll take that. A stardust, stardust clock Boy. or starburst clock. This guy sure has style. <laughs> a small shelf, nothing of interest. Got another abstract painting. Uh, not a curve in it, but it's going in circles, right? I guess stack of thick books. It's pretty dark in here, but I'm positive these are all the same book. Really thick ones too. I doubt Lambert will miss a few. All right, so I took a stack of books. He, ooh, there is an impression on the fireplace where he kept his rifle. It's not there now. Looks like there used to be a rifle here. And that would help really help light up this room. I wonder... Okay, so the room is dark. I wonder if I just throw these in here. Right. And then just light them up on fire. Ah, there we go. Nice. All right, now we can see things. More in there. Applied Physics and the Many Worlds Conundrum, a primer by Reginald Lambert. Oh, he's not going to be happy about this. I just chucked a whole bunch of those on in the fire. Well, <laughs> I'm sure he's got more. I'm sure he already knows what he wrote in there, so I guess it doesn't matter at that point. He's also got a zebra skin print uh, floor covering. So, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> This guy's got some money. Uh, can we play the piano? Very classy. Yeah, apparently we can. Just, just one note though. Nothing, nothing more than just one note. Wish I knew how to play. I never had piano lessons growing up, but I did play a mean kazoo. <laughs> uh, all right, and yeah, that's nothing else going on there. Nice. Oh, oh, there was a. There was a trapdoor under the rug. I didn't even know that. I just clicked on the rug <laughs> by accident. I was just trying to move him over here. All right, trapdoor. It's a trapdoor. Yeah, I get it. Can, can we open it? No handle or even a place to put one. Uh, can we use the corkscrew for a handle? Uh, apparently we can. It worked. There's a ladder leading down in the basement of some kind. All right, man, this guy's got wine. He's also got one wine missing. It's a lot of wine for just one guy. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Hmm. There's a bottle missing from this shelf. Yeah, I wonder if that's like a secret, a secret shelf where you put a bottle in there and it opens some door or something. It's this door. Door's locked, but it doesn't feel too solid. Right, okay. And he's got like a plan lying up there. Looks like floor plans for the house with a lot of handwritten notes. It seems Lambert is planning a lot of renovations. Oh, so if I go into the future, all this is going to be renovated, probably? Huh. Oh, look at that. He's working on a time machine. Anything in the trash can? Man, I've been in this job for too long. I can't even walk by a trash can anymore without checking if it needs empty. <laughs> uh, blueprints... For a time machine, I don't exactly have an engineering degree, but it says so on the drawings. Okay. Anything else around? Oh, there's a light bulb over there. Tanning bulb. I guess even scientists want to look their best. Yeah, I guess. Electronics parts. A spherical contraption. Very sciencey, he says. Okay. So I've got this light. What does that do for me? do anything for me uh, oh if, if it's a tanning bulb then it has UV light which might charge up my time travel device right because it needs sunlight which is just UV so yeah maybe that, how do I I guess I 
I need a lamp to put it in or something? Because none of these lights... None of these lights are working. Is that, that lamp I can't click on... There was a lamp back here that I could click on, wasn't there? I couldn't do anything with? Yeah, lamp over there. Let's see if I can put this bulb in this lamp. Oh, holy smokes, that's bright. Hey, my time machine is working again. Yep, 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 that's what I was thinking of. That's exactly how that works. Okay, plus you get a nice little tan out of it. Alrighty then, back down here we go. I'd say, unless there's something up here that I need, there might be something up here I need, I don't know. I want to go down here first and take a look around. Go through this door. And we'll use our time travel thing and see if he ever finished this. Apparently he did. And yeah, small photo lab. Small dark room over here. Red bulb, photo equipment, developer. It's got everything. Okay. It's got a hazardous material bot barrel. Got the lid off. It's full of oil. Uh, all right. Well, I don't have anything to collect the oil with. So I guess we'll need that later on. His blueprints have changed. The Mark II, this drawing is really complicated, but the outline of it took a of it looks a lot like the machine I have. Uh, we got a file room, and we got phone going off. Hang on a second. Okay, I'm back, and uh, let's see. What's this? Is his layout here? Virus lab, file room. Oh, uh, it's my workplace. This is Archon. Oh, this is the layout of. The Archon facility. Okay, cryo room, time machine room, filing room, virus lab, elevator. Okay, and that's the hallway going up to the computer room. Ah, okay, that's good. That's good to see. Now, this steel door, he's, he's upgraded his doors, apparently. This door used to be wood. It's all steel now. Yep, yep. Apparently, he's done some upgrades. So, is there anything else here that I need? Spherical contraption? Did you say anything about that? Wow. Wow, man, this is really something. According to those other blueprints, this was Lambert's first version of the time machine. It looks completely abandoned, though. Okay, so... Bam. Come through here now. And let's see what's out here. Yep, more steel doors. And lots of different shelves now. So he got, there's enough food here to survive for a month though, so he turned this into a, a, a bomb shelter, apparently. And we got a fire extinguisher. It's a lot lighter than I thought it would be. Oh wait, it's one of those extinguishers that need to be filled up with water first. Ew, okay. Uh, nothing there, enough food for a month. Alright, so he was certainly planning for the end of the world or so, it seems. Uh, I guess we can come up here and take a look around. Hmm. There's a lock on it now. Oh, okay. I guess we can't go up there and look around. Let's come up this way. And then we'll do this. Oh, wow, look at this place. It's got like a little windmill going. For power, I guess. And he's got raised beds. Vegetables. So he's making his own food and stuff. He's got a twig over here. Just a random twig. That I'm going to pick up, apparently. A dry twig. I guess I put Stranger Things to good use. Yeah, I, I guess so. More raised beds. So he's 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 doing all he's raising all of his food that he needs. So he must be like a sole survivor kind of thing because his fireplace is all like that too. Doesn't salt any use. And then we have what we have here. Looks like some kind of water collection system. Ooh. Well, this fire extinguisher needs water, right? So let's put that in here. And there we go, just in case I need that for something. I don't know what I need it for, but just in case. Another barrel over here that's empty. Come through. Uh, that is stuck. Okay. So we'll go like this. And we'll come through here now. And then we'll go forward in time. No, this place has seen better days, that's for sure. Oh, well, there's an axe over there. Can I get to that axe? 
Uh, can't reach it from here. These are some tough vines. Hmm. How about the door? Is there anything outside that I need? Uh, inside is your best bet. Okay, no. So, don't go outside is what he's saying. Uh, hmm. So, we did have some oil downstairs. I wonder if I could... I wonder if I could somehow start a fire here mm, to burn away those things and then get to the axe. Let's see what we can do. Can I open this door now? Nope, it's stuck. Okay. Um, come through here. We'll go downstairs again to where that oil barrel was in the time machine room. <clears throat> and see what I can do there. Is there like a rag or something around <clears throat> that I can use for this? Or I think there would be. Like I could just put a rag in there and and light that on fire. Uh, nothing yet. Nothing's popping out at me. Around here, nothing, nothing. Can I just dip the twig in there? Does that work? Uh, apparently it does. Okay. Alright, so... Come back the way we were. And... Oh, but I need to... I need to light it on fire. So, oh, I lit that... I lit the fireplace, right? So I should be able to do this. So it's like, oh yeah, I used my last match. But no, I've got the fireplace running. So we'll do that. Okay, better get to it quick. Get through there now. It's on fire. Got ourselves some fire. And then we'll go kabam. And we'll throw this over here. This burning twig with vines. Ooh, okay. Worked a little bit better than I thought. And then we got a fire extinguisher. Let's do that. Whew. Whew, it's out. I think I'm done playing with fire for today. Good. And now I can grab the axe. End of my axe. Stuck in there pretty good, but I got it. Excellent. Alright. So we'll go through this door again. And I imagine since the doors down here are steel in the future, we want to probably break through them now in the past with this axe, since they're wood now. Which would explain... My breaking through this would explain why he upgraded them to steel because he probably saw his door broken into and was like, okay, I, I need better security. <clears throat> yep, probably saw both of his doors broken through. Okay. Let's get in here. And <laughs> he's got himself a lava lamp. That's awesome. Which I am apparently taking. It's a lava lamp. Man, I love these. I don't know why I'm taking a lava lamp, but I am. It's got some plants in here. Got a nice bed. And globe. I'm no astronomer, but I'm pretty sure that's the moon up there. Yeah, that actually actually it is the moon up there. He's got he's got a globe of the moon. That's interesting. And different. Aquarium. Somebody's taking good care of this fish. Whenever it has to be around here. Okay, so if now that I've broken in here, if I go into the future. We've got an electrical socket. Uh, I wonder, should I plug the lava lamp in again? Whoa. Whoa, trippy. <laughs> hey, there's a bottle here. All right, wine bottle. That's weird. I don't think this bottle is made of glass. Even the cork seems painted on. Ah, yes, it's that fake wine bottle to open up whatever is in that thing. July 18th, 1972. No progress this week. Two months of cold nights since that imbecile broke my bedroom door. And last night, I nearly got mauled by a bear. So I finally caved and built new doors. I'd like to see him blunder his way through these. Still, I must admit, he gives an entirely new meaning to the term idiot proof. <laughs> okay, so he is apparently taking on some other sort of survivor. And he's, uh, he's not the smartest tool in the shed, apparently. All right, uh, let's go back to here. Come this way with this wine bottle that we've got, this fake cement wine bottle. Put that in the shelf and see if it unlocks a secret room. Far out. 
Ah, nice. Far out. There's a secret passage behind these shells. Yep. 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 Oh, and the guy. Hello. Stop right there. Whoa, whoa, wait. Uh, Mr. Lambert, sir, it's me, Joe. I don't know you. What are you doing in my house? Y you you sent me here, remember? I've done no such thing. For an intruder, you're not very bright, you know that? For all the commotion you caused getting in here, you might as well have brought a bulldozer. Now, you have exactly five seconds to explain what you're doing here. Or so help me God, I'm pulling this trigger and sending you on your way. Five. I, I, I was sent here. Four. By you! Three. You told me to find you, to warn you about the end of the world. Two. You were old, uh, with white hair, and you got shot. Oh, God, please don't shoot me, Mr. Lambert. This, this, you gave me this. Uh, it's an inter-something, uh, chrono. It's a time machine. I gave you that? Yes! I've never seen anything like it. But on the back, that's my family signet. I made this? It's simply magnificent. I gave this to you? Why? Who are you? Name's Joe, sir. I, I'm, I'm just a janitor at the Archon building. I found you in a room with a big, round door in the basement labs this morning, and you, you were dying. You said you'd come from 40 years in the future to stop the end of the world. I, I guess I was the only one around, so you gave me this and told me to find you and tell you all this, and I've been there. The future, I mean. A bunch of times. And you were right, Mr. Lambert. Everyone's gone. My God, so it did come to pass. They really did it, those greedy goddamn bastards. I told them this would happen. Wait, I was dying? How? You said you'd been shot. I had to actually find you at the, uh, uh, the morgue to get this address. Shot? By whom? No, wait. Don't say anything else. You succeeded in finding me, which means anything you tell me from this point on could alter the course of action that brought you to my doorstep. The less I know, the better. So, you've seen the future. What did you see? It's like a bad dream, sir. Everyone's gone. Buildings are coming apart. It's all just quiet. What happened, Mr. Lambert? It is Doctor, Dr. Lambert. And considering all the effort you just went through to find me, not to mention bearing witness to the horrific outcome of the biggest breakthrough in the history of science, I suppose I owe you some kind of explanation. I was 24 when I got hired by Archon, or Athena, as it was called back then. Athena was one of the many weapons R&D companies formed during the Second World War. Unlike other R&D companies that had retooled themselves to pursue peacetime activities after the war, Athena had made enough money to continue chasing the next big thing in defense technologies. They were betting the farm on post-war Soviet expansion, raising the level of government paranoia to create a lucrative market for esoteric weapons research. I'd say they made the right bet. Still a theoretical physicist at MIT, my thesis on the possibility of time travel via dimensional membranes got published shortly after I was hired in 1961. Company heads were so impressed, they gave me a team and a budget. Development exceeded even my own expectations. And after only six years, we had the first primitive version of the time machine up and running. Our first successful trials involved sending simple objects into the future with a timed return. 
But with Archon running out of money, that was all the company bigwigs needed to secure a big fat contract with the Department of Defense. Apparently, we had sold them on the idea that the technology could be used to go back in time and strangle communism in its cradle. The reality, of course, was that it couldn't. Due to the laws of causality, you can't travel back in time beyond the point where time travel was invented. And sooner or later, we had to explain that to our benefactors. When they started pushing for progress reports, Archon management had to come clean, but instead chose to ease government concerns by claiming the technology could be used to bring back advanced weapons from the future. But this too was a lie. At this point, we'd already had our first of many human trials, and we knew there would be no weapons. In fact, our results were as terrifying as they were baffling. Time pilots returned frenzied and confused, raving about empty streets and human remains. At first, we assumed the city had suffered a Soviet attack in the near future and had been evacuated as a result. But as we pushed on further, the terrible reality became clear. Time pilots started returning fatally ill, dying within a day or two from painful convulsions. Some never returned. We lost several pilots, machine prototypes, and other equipment. When the first contamination erupted in the lab, we were completely unprepared, losing three lab technicians to what we later identified as an incredibly aggressive airborne virus. Although we weren't equipped to handle biohazards of this magnitude, management insisted we contain and study it. To keep our pilots and the virus alive long enough to study, we co-opted experimental cryotechnology from another project, Lazarus, and established a makeshift virus lab. Once again, the bigwigs managed to spin our setbacks into a success story for the Department of Defense now claiming that the virus could be cultivated for use as a biological weapon. The team threatened to resign, but outrage was swiftly quenched by promises of massive salary increases and stock options. I didn't take the bribe. I'd witnessed the lethal efficiency of the virus firsthand. I knew there was only one way this was going to end, so I handed in my resignation and set up shop out here. For over a year, I've been working to recreate the technology to bring me back in time and prevent mankind's extinction from ever happening. And now you're here, the harbinger of doom at my doorstep, wearing a boiler suit. Who could have imagined that Judgment Day would begin like any other Monday in May? In any case, unfathomable as it may be that you were able to bring this information to me, knowing is only half the battle. Preventing the outbreak will require more than just your tenacity. Me? Wait, what? Yes, I'm afraid I must rely on you one more time. You must go back to Archon and prevent the outbreak. No, no, that that's, uh, I mean... I'm really honored and everything, but... Believe me, you're the last person in the world I want to entrust with this. And I mean that quite literally. But by this time tomorrow, the entire city will have succumbed to chaos, panic, and death. You're here now, and you're all I've got. Wait, but what about you? Can't you fix this, Doc? Don't you have a plan? I can't go myself, because that would break the law of causality. The only reason you are here to warn me now is because I was there to send you. And the only reason I was there to send you is because I was able to bring my work to fruition here. But... We've no time to waste. It's the only way. 
You told me you found me this morning, correct? Yes, but... That means I failed to stop it, and the outbreak has already begun. The time pilot for today's trial must have brought the virus back from the future, which then somehow got out of the containment chamber and spread. That pilot is patient zero. I need you to destroy the supercomputer system controlling the time machine. All the research data is stored there too. You must destroy it before the time machine departs. I'm reconfiguring your device to send you back one day earlier. This should allow you ample time to return to Archon and get inside. On the other shore from here, about 500 yards down the road, is a rest stop. You'll find a van there, fueled and ready to go. Oh, I already have a ride. Which won't be there yesterday, you ninny. Now stop interrupting me. One last thing, and I need you to listen carefully because this is very, very important. Make sure you do not meet the earlier version of you. Why? What will happen? No one knows for sure. It's one of the conundrums not yet accounted for. There are theories, of course. None of them pleasant. Now, let's get you ready. How did I get myself into this? I nearly got killed trying to reach Dr. Lambert thinking he had a plan. And it turns out it's me. I'm the plan. At least I don't have to walk back. This van's not as cool as the ambulance, but it has its charm. And it sure was nice of him to pack me lunch. You burn jelly? should pack me a can opener for the beans, though. And some gas for the Bunsen burner. <laughs> Pork and beans? I'm sure, I'll think of something. I've got several hours of driving ahead of me, after all. It'll be almost morning before I get to Archon. I just hope I have enough time.